Hello, I'm Michelle Lee, and I work at Gensler, the global strategic design and architecture firm. Have you ever gone into a space and felt that you didn't belong? Maybe you're tall, and none of the furniture in the room fits your body. Maybe you're in a club, but the music was so loud it hurt your ears. Or a hospital room with lighting so bright it hurt your eyes, or induces migraines, as it does for me. Or a hotel designed for students, but you're a family with middle school kids or an office with air conditioning so cold you couldn't concentrate. We've all been there, an environment that made us feel left out. And sometimes that's because it was designed intentionally or not to exclude. None of these settings bring out the best in us. And when we're at work, we want to be our best and feel our best in order to do our best work. The places we work in shouldn't create barriers to this. So that's what we mean when we talk about inclusive design. Inclusive design is literally design for everyone. When we design inclusively, we consider how an object or a space might create exclusion, whether it's because of age, size, race, gender, culture, ability, or socioeconomic status. Now, inclusive design alone cannot guarantee a person will feel 100% that they belong. If a company has a toxic culture, or an organization has inadequate HR policies, or a school overlooks bullying, people are not included, they won't feel safe, and they won't feel that they belong. But as designers of all types, architects and strategists, we know that an inclusively designed, built environment is an essential component of belonging. So how do we think about this methodically? I'm a strategist. I love frameworks, so Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs is a great guide for inclusive design. Start by meeting physiological needs or access. If we can't get into a place or move around it, we've been excluded before we even begin. This means main entrances and exits that anyone can get to and through, including during winter weather and storms easy access to items for both seated and standing positions, and a variety of restrooms so that everyone is comfortable. Then there's health and safety. We can't concentrate on our work if we're worrying about security, intense glare in our eyes, or trying to regulate our temperature. Architects are licensed for health and safety, so this is right up our alley. Let's minimize tripping hazards and make floors, ramps, and stairs safe for all. Extension cords, looking at you. Reduce the spread of diseases with touchless equipment and encourage behaviors that are desired with communication and design nudges. Fresh air, natural light, biophilia, plants and nature can improve productivity, lower stress levels, and enhance learning. Next, there's experience in the built environment. Is this a comfortable place for me to get things done? This list includes temperature and lighting control, lighting that flatters all skin tones. Really double check this one given the proliferation of video meetings. Floor plans designed so you're not lost all the time or causing you to ask for directions to the restroom that best suits you. Break rooms that allow everyone to find a space to socialize that meets their needs. Think variety of sizes and less stimuli for cognitive differences. And just like we use different equipment for different sports, Different kinds of work require unique workspaces so that we can perform better. For example, single-use spaces designed for focusing and concentrating versus collaborative areas that are open or enclosed, and furniture of different sizes that people can move around to suit their needs, giving people agency over their environment. Lastly, culture can't be created by the built environment alone but an inclusive workplace can support a culture of belonging. Design should incorporate the traditions of the people who use the space. So if sitting on the floor is common to the culture of the people using the space, provide opportunities to do so. If standing meetings are a part of the culture, build that into conference rooms or provide walking paths and get some vitamin D. At the same time, don't appropriate cultural design features that don't reflect the company. And remember, you're designing places and experiences for employees and visitors of all type. So when we create a space using these principles for inclusive design, we do our part to make sure people feel like they belong, reflecting who they are and who they want to become.